Hey guys, it's Robin, RS Island Crafts. This is Talk To Me Tuesday for Tuesday, June 12, 2018. It's been just an average week this week, uh, more errands to run. I worked on, I worked a lot on a few projects, but I didn't work a little on a lot of projects. I plan on spending my Sunday afternoon doing some sewing and catching up on some Rare Bear sewing, but my daughter called me and she wanted to go out shopping at Walmart and I couldn't say no to spending the afternoon with my daughter, now could I? She needed a new table for her bedroom. She's doing some type of desk with an extra table and she needed a printer for it and to set up her computer and all that. It was all right because I've been putting off a trip to Walmart. It's the next town over and you've got to go through this busy, it's, it's only like what, maybe five or 10 miles away, but you got to go through these busy lights and these people drive like maniacs here and there's constantly accidents on this road. So I, I try to avoid that way, but I was able to go the way our city set up Like I told you it's all this weird grid work. I was able to take some back roads and we came in a different way So it wasn't too bad. I Picked up some new shoes and new slippers. I finally picked up the sheet to finish my crumb curtain behind you I had to pick up some bras, you know those things you just need to go to the store to pick up You can't always get things online but one of the things I did finish this week is I finished this top. This is the first of the t-shirt quilts. This one is for Sophie. She is the middle grandchild. I'll put a link up in the iCard for the video where I talked about how I decided how to get this all laid out. I spent most of my week working on this quilt top, but I did get a little bit of other things done. So let's go see what else I did. For those of you who've been with me for a while, you'll see that I got a new cutting mat also. This was actually thanks to one of my viewers who told me in the comments that Fiskars has a replacement program. If your cutting mat starts to deteriorate in a way that isn't from normal everyday use, they actually replace it for free. Uh, they sent me this one. The only problem I had is the way they sh this was shipped. It came in a flat box, but it came from uh, UPS delivered at the big brown trucks. And when I got the box, the box was all wavy and bent and dug up and, you know, it was, it was a mess. So I went ahead and I put this mattress, it, this mattress. The cutting mat was nice and warm from being out in the Florida sun in the back of their trucks. So I went ahead and I put it underneath a memory foam mattress. I have um, plywood instead of a box spring. So I put it between the plywood and the, I have, I think it's about a 10 inch memory foam mattress. And I let it sit in there for about three days. And it took, it only had a little bit of a wave to it. So it took that wave out of it. So it wasn't too, too bad, but it's still gonna work fine. It's, it's flat enough. It's not anything, you know, overly noticeable. And I think over time, it'll probably flatten out the rest of the way. But I really, really appreciate the heads up about their program. Saved me a little bit of money for uh, having to buy a new cutting mat. Don't tell hubby, but I used the money that I saved to buy some special templates to make a new quilt pattern I found. Shh, it's a secret. So now we'll really be able to tell that my, uh, my little dishcloths aren't perfectly square. They need to be stretched out a little bit, but I did get one. And number two done this week. So I got two new dishcloths to add to my bucket. And that's it. Like I said, I've been knitting on my son Robbie's socks. It's just the same socks you've seen before. I'm close to the end. You may be able to see the finished product next week. So if I finish them, I'll just show them then. Underneath here, I have all my bears all set up. I have them in assembly line fashion. I'm hiding them underneath here because the cats like to jump up on this table. So when I'm not around and the door is open, like when I go get a drink or something, I don't want the cats to jump up on it. So we did get some nice postcards this week. Look at this fun one from Texas. So this big old huge postcard, it's about uh, 11 inches, well, if it was square, it's 11 inches tall and 11 inches wide. I'll just show you a little bit of what it's on here. Big postcard because everything's bigger in Texas, right? You can see that it's got this shiny fabric on it. Houston Astros and the uh, Bucking Bronco up here with some beadwork around it. So this is one of those fabric postcards. This one came in a box. This one definitely did not go through the mail. I really don't think it would have survived going through the regular mail service with these different points on it. Plus, I'm sure because it's not 4 by 6 with the regular postcard size that the post office would probably have had a fit. We have the Flume from New Hampshire. 
that looks beautiful. I love being in the woods with the little um, with the little creeks and rivers with all the rocks like that. And it's got this beautiful walking path along it. I would definitely love to walk through there. Then we have one from Wisconsin. Now Wisconsin is the Badger State. It was the 30th state in the nation in 1848. The state was named after the Wisconsin River. The nickname of Badger State refers to the lead miners of the 1930s who lived underground in temporary caves cut in the hillsides. Wisconsin is identified as America's dairy land because of Wisconsin's dairy farms, which lead the nation in the production of milk, cheese, and butter. Hey, the state birds the robin and the state flowers the violet. I hear the winters in Wisconsin can be really brutal and their summers are short, so they've got to spend out the time outside and enjoy it the best they can. And look at this beautiful fabric postcard. This one is uh, made to represent Mount Rainier, and that's in Washington. This one's a little bit stiff, so you have to be careful. We have to, I still have to make some postcards and take them up to the postcard office to see what their different rules are. They no longer hand stamp and hand feed it, process it through the system. Everything has to be able to go through the machine. So I need to go up and find out what the different rules are and has something to do with um, flexibility. If it's stiff and hard like this, it has to be processed as a package. And if it's more flexible, then there's different rules. So I haven't, I finally got my supplies in last week to make my own. So I want to make a couple of them and take them up there and see what they say and what the different regulations are before we go ahead and start making them. Well, this one's really, really fun. You use just like this fabric right here. I believe this one's a batik like this one and it just looks like rocks. And you can use your different fabric just to represent things. So you've got the, the rocky hillside in the mountain with the snow on it and the trees have been pinked and then just stitched down. I'll go ahead and show you the back. It's just done on a regular postcard type thing, but the material inside is really stiff from like what you'd use in the bottom of a tote bag to keep the bottom nice and firm. So this one's just a little bit too firm to be going through the mail. Now, 350 while well, that's a lot for mailing a postcard, it's really not too bad, but I think we can get that price down a lot if we were to put it into an envelope or something. So let me get down to the post office soon and check that out. I'm hoping to be able to make some of these fabric postcards this week, but we'll see how time goes i need to keep working on those t-shirt quilts before we get into what i'm doing next week i want to show you one more thing that came with this wonderful texas postcard look at this beautiful pottery mug it's got since we were doing owls i received this from becca the potter's wife i'm going to put a link down below to uh, her husband's Facebook page. He makes these cups, but it's Delafield Pottery on Facebook. But I'll put the link down below. She says that you can see all the different things he makes there. And if you find something you like, you just let them know and they'll, they'll send you an invoice and ship it out to you. But look at that. It kind of looks fierce. Beautiful colorings. I was talking to Beck and I said, this reminded me of the Texas Longhorns. The way they made the beak and the eyebrows and like that for the owl. But look at those. All the different fun colors. This is really beautiful in person. And since it's uh, ceramic pottery, it's got a nice weight to it. It's got the good spot to hold on to it for your thumb there. When you're making something handmade like this, you can add in those special details that you know everybody likes. Because it's just nice to be able to put your thumb up there and hold it. Now, it's summertime here, and I don't drink a lot of hot drinks, so this will probably sit in my craft room for me to look at its beauty for a while, and then I will test it out this winter. So this week coming up, I have all these, um, the rare bears sitting underneath here hiding. I'd like to get all five of them stitched up if I could. If not, I'd like to make a decent amount of progress on that. I have trimmed up all the blocks for Emily's quilt, the second t-shirt quilt from Daniel's Memory T-shirts. I need to get that into a top. I'm like this far from finishing each of Robbie's socks. I just need to do the cuffs on it. And I usually do, I think I'm going to probably do about a 25 um, row cuff for him and that's it. And then I'll be able to cast on the new ones, I, new yarn I bought for him. He's been dying for some rainbow yarn and I didn't want to pay the price of the hand dyed ones because Robbie doesn't take that good care of his socks. He just, he wears them. 
He wears them to death. He throws them in the washer and the dryer. And sometimes they get misplaced. Sometimes he'll lose one. I really didn't want to spend $30 on a pair of socks for him if he's not going to treat them as a $30 pair of sock. So I found some nice rainbow yarn for him. I think I only spent like $8 for it and it'll be enough to make a pair of socks for him and he'll be very, very pleased there. Dish cloths, dish cloths, dish cloths, but that's it for me. I hope you guys have an amazing crafty week. I hope you're getting out to enjoy some of this summer beautiful sunshine we have and I'll see you next week. Bye.